So we're living in a country where two conflicting feelings remain unresolved. They are the feelings that we know there's a strong global demand for English in our country, and we've got to acquire it to keep up with globalization. But still, we are struggling with having the sense of ownership of English in that we feel we can't fully express ourselves within our own local cultural frameworks in English. So I'd like to suggest a solution for this dilemma in this presentation. What do you think does this number represent? Last year, I went back to my hometown and I was reading a newspaper, um, which is not very often, but I picked up a newspaper and started to read one of the articles because I was very much surprised to read the headline of the article. And it said, SoftBank, one of the Japanese cell phone companies, dangles one million yen carat for employees who joined Toic 900 Club, which means if they score 900 points or more on TOEIC, they can get paid 1 million yen bonus. Wow, that's great, isn't it? With the rise of globalization, more and more Japanese companies are becoming international and promote the use of English even among the Japanese people at the expense of their native language. For example, many companies use TOEIC as job requirements and for promotion. Some of the companies started to use English as a common language in the companies, and the president of Rakuten announced, use English or you get fired. So English competence literally determines the access to the job, payment, promotion, and their future. Yes, there is a strong global demand for English in our country, but have you ever imagined all Japanese people are talking to each other in English in their daily lives. Well, you might say, what? It's impossible. Here's Japan. Japanese language is used for every purpose. Yes, you're right. But that's exactly what one of the Japanese government council was trying to do. In 2000, they said as follows. It's necessary that all citizens acquiring a working knowledge of English by the time they take their place in society. In the long term, it may be possible to make English an official second language in Japan. Well, when I went to India, I met local people there, and I talked about this issue of English as an official second language in Japan. And suddenly, the room got very quiet. And after a while, a man sitting in the corner started to say, I don't understand, and we don't understand how it's possible. It's unconscionable for us. We have English as an official language, but it's not because we want it, but because we had to. We had no choice because India was a former British colony, and we've lost a lot of minority languages, and I can't communicate with my grandmother in her language. And what I don't understand is that why Japan is willing to make English an official second language, even though it has never been colonized. It's unconscionable for us, he said. And he stared at me and said, your language has created its own culture for a long time, and you're living in your own Japanese culture. And it shapes who you are. It's your identity. And it connects you with your friends, your relatives, and your family. And he said this that I never forget. Don't let it go. Keep it. Because your culture is the stuff of your life. I said, OK, and we left the room. He was right. Language is more than a tool for communication. Language is a culture. And culture is a source of personal identity that shapes who we are. So we should appreciate our Japanese values and cultures, regardless of what language we speak, whether it's Japanese or English. However, many Japanese people seem to fail to do so when they speak English. Tsuda, for example, warns the linguistic and cultural imperialism, saying that the dominance of English in Japan is causing serious consequences, such as colonization of the consciousness of Japanese people, causing them to develop the linguistic, cultural, and psychological dependency upon in identification with the English, its culture, and people. 
Also, according to my study, which investigated the Japanese university students' appropriation of ownership of English, they said, although they understand the role of English as an international language, they still believe that English belongs to its native speakers, and so they have to conform to the Anglo-American cultural values when they speak English. So many Japanese people are still struggling with having this sense of ownership of English in that they feel they can't fully express themselves within their own local cultural frameworks in English. So we're living in a country where the dilemma between the global demand for English and the struggle with expressing the local values remain unresolved. I think we must deal with this issue because otherwise many Japanese learners of English may internalize the monolithic native cultural value and they may also believe that their peripheral position in international communication is irreversible until they achieve the native linguistic and pragmatic competence. So, how can we solve this problem? Or how can we reconcile, or at least mitigate, the dilemma between these two? And this is my solution. Japanese English. And what is Japanese English? Japanese English is a funny English mixed with English loanword and Japanese made English with Japanese accents. No, but I think that's the assumption that the majority of people have. But I found it really interesting that if people say, well, you speak good English, then it's a compliment. But if people say, you speak good Japanese English, then it's an irony, an insult. Am I right? But this is not my definition of Japanese English, because it doesn't entail the international intelligibility or comprehensibility. And this is my definition of Japanese English. Japanese English is a variety of English for expressing Japanese values, behaviors, and cultures for international communication. So, I'm going to show you just a few of the examples of Japanese English in terms of grammatical, lexical, and sociolinguistic features in reference to Hino 2012. One of the grammatical features of Japanese English is about the distinction between will and be going to. Hino explains that it's completely fine for the Japanese users of English to say, I will play tennis, when asked, what are your plans for the weekend? Though, many native speakers of English may find this use of will a little bit strange, because they are supposed to be talking about an event which is already in progress. However, in Japanese English, both will and be going to can be considered to be the same for two reasons. First, since Japanese language is a futureless language, and so we are not interested in distinguishing between these two kinds of future tenses in the first place. Second, as much research shows, the lack of this distinction doesn't really deteriorate the mutual intelligibility in international communication. So we can say that the lack of this distinction is one of the features of Japanese English that reflects the Japanese language and hence our way of thinking. So then what are the lexical features of Japanese English? A few years ago, I was taking a writing class and I wrote, I am a second year student in Waseda University and I submitted. And I got my paper back with a revision like this. And I thought, OK, and I revised it. However, defining a second year student as sophomore doesn't mean anything to many Japanese people because it's an idiomatic expression in the United States. Besides, while the expressions like freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior are well understood by American readers, it's not always communicative for many people from different education systems. Since Japanese language is, uh, since English is an international language which goes beyond the Anglo-American norms, we don't always have to use the expression specific to Anglo-American culture. And instead, we can use the expressions like second year student in university, which is directly translated from the Japanese word daigaku ninensei to reflect the Japanese language and our way of thinking. So now let's move on to the sociolinguistic features of Japanese English. I still remember that when I was in junior high school, 
I made a name tag with my given name on, and we were supposed to call each other by our given names in English classes. Though, outside English classes, many of them called each other by their family names. Hino rightly points this out by saying that in many of the English-speaking classes in Japan, it is, it is often taken for granted that students should call each other by their given names instead of their family names in accordance with American norms, uh, despite the fact that such practice is against East Asian culture rooted in Confucian tradition. In Japanese English, the use of their family names can be regarded as the basis for calling each other to, um, to reflect the Japanese social linguistic convention. But I can hear many people say, well, I know what you're saying, but nevertheless, we should use native varieties of English because English belongs to its native speakers. Well, yes, it sounds reasonable because the general assumption of the ownership of a language is that the language belongs to its native speakers, which stems from the assumption that those who speak the language as the native speakers will naturally outnumber the non-native speakers. However, this assumption needs closer investigation when it comes to English, because the current number of native speakers vis-a-vis non-native speakers of English suggests the overthrow of this assumption. With the spread of English, more than 80% of English users around the world are non-native speakers. And that's why English was detached or denationalized from the Anglo-American cultural values. And it was also renationalized or embedded into the culture in which it is used for any English users, regardless of native speakers or non-native speakers, to express their own indigenous values and cultures. And here, I'd like to introduce a wonderful quote by Smith, 1976. English belongs to the world, and every nation which it does so with different tone, color, and quality. It is yours, no matter who you are, as much as it is mine, no matter who I am. It belongs to all of us. English is one of the languages of Japan, Korea, Micronesia, and the Philippines. It is one of the languages of China, Thailand, and the United States. No one needs to become more like American, the British, the Australians, the Canadians, or any other English speaker in order to claim on the language. I believe Japanese English is a turning point and a solution for the Japanese people to be really able to acquire this sense of ownership of English in that they feel they can fully express themselves within their own local cultural frameworks in English. And I also believe that Japanese English will enable us to be more aware of the importance of Japanese values and cultures. As one of my friends in India said, don't let it go. Keep it, because your culture is the stuff of your life. Thank you very much.